It's a pleasure. So what should the Fed do next week? Well, we, we, we will see, frankly speaking. Of course, uh, before the hectic financial uh, sphere that uh, we have today, everybody was expecting 50 basis points, I would say. Uh, whether it would be 50, 25 or zero, I led it to the open market committee meeting. They know better. They have to uh, see what happens, what happened exactly, uh, and what is the degree of, uh, I would say, disruption that is observed in the, in the market. I will not make any recommendation to the Fed, if you permit. You know, a lot of people look back on your time uh, leading the European Central Bank, and a lot of people look back on 2008 and, and what they call a big mistake when you hiked interest rates. Yes, we were seeing rising commodity prices and inflation, but then we saw, of course, the stress in the money market funds and then Lehman, and, and you know what happened next. A lot of people see that as a mistake for making what Europe suffered during the crisis worse. And the question I'm wondering is, with that hindsight, do you worry about what the European Central Bank did this week? Well, first of all, uh, central banks have very, very important responsibility, and every decision you're taking is a very complex and delicate balancing act when you have both inflation threats on the one hand and a market which is uh, more or less hectic on the other hand. So you have to weight exactly the situation. What we did in the past in the ECB, including in my time, was to be extremely rapid and swift when we had to combat disruption, when we had to combat uh, speculation. And uh, I want only to tell you that uh, even before Lehman, I gave myself 95 million euros, dollars, you name it, uh, to the uh, market in, uh, in August 2007. And it was uh, long before Lehman, and it was because of the subprime disruption. So uh, we always been very, very swift on combating disruption, and uh, including, of course, uh, purchasing Greek, Irish, Portuguese, uh, Italian and Spanish treasuries. So, on the one hand, you have that. And on the other hand, the ECB is responsible for price stability. And so I take it that the decision they took yesterday uh, was the right one, because you had the two elements in it. First, we increase rates by 50 basis points, as you said. On the other hand, we are not anymore uh, explicitly mentioned what we will do in the future, no more explicit, precise forward guidance. Right. They took guidance, they, yeah. And that, that is a big change. That is a big change yeah. because the previous for, forward guidance was 50 plus 50. Now they say 50 okay. because we are responsible of price stability and we will see exactly the data, the evolution of the situation, and we'll take our decision as a function of these right. new elements. So on the evolution of the situation, given your pretty intimate knowledge of the European banking system, what do you think happens here to Credit Suisse, and how does it reverberate through the system? Well, first of all, it's a new demonstration of the fact that we are living in a global village, if I may, in the financial sector, because one element uh, intervening, one event intervening in the U.S. has immediate consequence, not only on many other U.S. regional banks, but also on other weak, uh, I would say, financial institutions in the world. So uh, that, that is really, that calls for great vigilance. Vigilance is of the essence. No complacency on any kind, including in applying by the rule, in applying by the, I would say, so-called Basel rule. As regards the Credit Suisse, it was obviously the weakest bank in Europe. Not too surprising that uh, they are on the spot now. I hope very much that appropriate solution will be found out as rapidly as possible, both for the European, uh, I would say, uh, uh, assets of, uh, of the Credit Suisse and also for the U.S. assets of Credit Suisse. We will see how it moves. What is clear is that the Swiss uh, central bank was extremely uh, rapid also as the Fed has been 
on uh, trying to be uh, as helpful as possible. But it is not a definitive solution. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to follow up on that, Mr. Trichet, you know, specific to Credit Suisse, which has been a mismanaged institution for many years. Yes. The Swiss are obviously not going to allow it to fail, but you do seem to be of the belief that perhaps it will be absorbed or its various businesses may be in, by various other uh, banking institutions. I have no particular information on that, of course, but seen from, uh, I would say, an outside uh, standpoint, I, I think that what is very important is that the business model of the of Credit Suisse would be credible again, that the credit worthiness of Credit Suisse would be credible in the eyes of the uh, financial counterparts and the clients. And that, of course, calls for some changes, because, as you said, uh, Credit Suisse has been the weak institution in Europe and in Switzerland. Don't forget that uh, uh, Switzerland is not part of the euro area, not part of the European Union. So we, we are in a domain where the responsibilities uh, are uh, clear from that standpoint. But we knew that Credit Suisse had problems, and I hope very much that appropriate medium-long-term solution would be found out. Yes, indeed.